Let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakadash, that's Yahweh, being the true name of our Heavenly Father in Hebrew, Yahweh Shai, being the true name of our Lord and Savior, and the Rakakadash, which is the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone for teaching the world this truth. Honors to the brothers that's pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. Shut them out to the hopeful we let. The one third of our people who's returning back to the Lord during these last days so that he will have mercy on them in the time of judgment. So we're coming back at you with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this lesson is going to be titled, The Reason We're Speaking Hebrew Again, or The Reason We're Returning Back to the Hebrew Language, or The Importance of the Hebrew. It's going to be titled something like that, but really this video is going to be talking about all of those things, the importance of the Hebrew language and why we speak it now. And that's why we say Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. That's the Father, that's that's the name of the Lord and the name of his son. Ba is in, Ha is the, and Sham is name. So Bahashim Yahweh Shai in the name of the Son. And us returning back to the Hebrew language was something that was prophesied in the scriptures. So when we be speaking Hebrew, a lot of people think that we just jibber jabbing, that we just yapping. We never just yapping, first of all. But like I said, it was prophesied and we gonna show that in the scriptures. In the last days, the one third of the elect will return to the Hebrew language. And a lot of people dismiss it, but they dismiss all things as spiritual anyway. Us returning to Hebrew is spiritual. So the first scripture we're gonna get into, probably the longest scripture in the Bible. This is it right here. Ecclesiasticus one and one. It's an apocrypha, the King James, you know, one of the books they took out. So this is the prologue of the wisdom of Yahweh Shai, the son of Sirach. This is not our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. This is just the son of, you know, one of the prophets. And this passage here uh, spoke of the things back then, but very much applies to now. How we returning back to our language and learning and teaching one another and returning to the Hebrew language. And I learned this from my brother Labar, but we're going to bring it out. Whereas many great things have been delivered unto us by the law and the prophets and by the others that follow in their steps. So yeah, many great things has been delivered to the elect, those who partake in his truth. You know, by the law, the first five books of the Bible and the books of the prophets and the others that follow after their steps, such as the letters of Paul and the last few books of the Bible. And who are the others that follow in their steps, follow in the steps of the prophets? It would be the man of the Lord that's on the scene now. So again, many great things have been delivered unto us by the law and the prophets and by others that have followed in their steps. For the which things Israel ought to be commended for learning and wisdom. So for the things that Israel ought to be commended for. This ain't talking about the world, this is talking about the Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And these things ought to be commended for learning and wisdom, meaning that we need to, you know, pat ourselves on the back for learning this stuff. It's for our own benefit, and it was hidden from us. So more of a reason to commend ourselves for it. And if we continue, And whereof not only the readers must needs become skillful themselves, but also they that desire to learn, be able to profit them which are without, both by speaking and writing. So when we read this, this means that not only the readers, the people who's learning this stuff, we need to be skillful for ourselves, but not only for ourselves, but you need to be skillful for the others that desire to learn. And the others that desire to learn that are 
without this knowledge, but also they that desire to learn to be able to profit them, which are without, meaning without the knowledge and understanding that we have. And this is the reason why we need to become skillful. So again, and whereof not only the readers must needs become skillful themselves, meaning we we become we become familiar with the words of the Bible, the Hebrew and Greek language, world events, how everything ties together. So we not only become skillful for ourselves, but also they which desire to learn to be able to profit them that are without. So we want to profit to those who don't have this knowledge. We want them to benefit from the knowledge that we have as well. And how do we profit them which are without this knowledge is by speaking and by writing. And what would be and speaking, that would be us speaking in public, speaking in person, and writing would be us putting lessons together, doing the breakdowns. And as we continue, my grandfather Yahweh Shai, not our Lord and Savior, but another man, when he had much given himself to the reading of the law and the prophets and other books of our fathers and had gotten during good judgment was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning into wisdom to the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things might profit much more in living according to the law. Now we're going to break this down. So when the grandfather of Syrac, Yahweh Shai, you know, a different one, when he had given much himself to the reading of the law, meaning he devoted his life, you know, to reading the law, the prophets and the other books of the Bible, the books of our fathers, that had guided during good judgment once he read and got full of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and was drawn on awesome himself to write something pertaining to what learning and wisdom. So again, was, let me read it. My grandfather, Yahweh Shai, when he had much given himself to the reading of the law and the prophets and the other books of our fathers, and had therein gotten good judgment, meaning he got full of his wisdom, was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning into wisdom. And that would be the man of the Lord today. Once we gave ourselves to reading the law, the prophets, and the other books of our fathers, once we had gotten the good judgment, got full of this not as wisdom and understanding, we took it upon ourselves to write something pertaining to learning into wisdom. And what we did is we started making, you know, lessons and videos. And the videos that we make would be this part here, us drawing on also ourselves to write something pertaining to the learning into the wisdom because we all make videos and put lessons together you know pertaining to this truth to contribute to the body of the knowledge of the true believers to the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things might profit much more in living according to the law so yeah we once we get foot of this uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We get the good judgment after reading the books. We take it upon ourselves to write something pertaining to the law. You know, we make videos pertaining to this truth to contribute to our knowledge. And it would be, and the knowledge we're contributing this to would be those that are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things. Because the one third hopeful elect would be addicted to the things in the scriptures. They would be addicted to the breakdowns uh, and to the understanding of the scriptures. That's why we do these things. The believers and the teachers both alike are addicted to the breakdown of the scriptures. And we're addicted to it because we see that it might profit much more in living according to the law. So that by coming back to the scriptures that um, it will profit us you know, in our lives today. Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us, wherein we may seem to come short of some words, 
which we have labor to interpret. Interpret. Now let's break this part down. Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention. So we are instructing the people to read it with favor and attention. You got to like reading this truth to learn. You can't learn nothing that you don't like. That's why the classes you didn't like in school, you did bad in them. But you got to read this with favor and attention. You can't just read it once and then go to the next sentence. You might have to read that same sentence 10 or 15 times. Before I started this video, I had to read some of these sentences here 10 or 15 times to make sure I got it. And then you can't be multitasking when you read and studying all the time. You got to set aside time just to sit here and to look at the words, to repeat them and to read them over and over again so they become part of you. So, therefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us, meaning forgive us, but forgive us for what? Forgive us wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret. So, you know, us doing these teachings, we may come short of some of the interpretations of the scriptures. Now, we, 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 we got the message, the, the mystery contained in the scriptures, but some words, um, when we try to interpret it, um, you got to forgive some people for coming short. And this is when you try to interpret it only looking at the English words, because when you just read it in English, some of the things are not all the way clear. So you have to forgive brothers sometimes if they don't go into the Greek or the Hebrew. So again, pardon us wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret. For the same thing uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. So let's read it again. For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. So this is why you have to pardon us when we come short of some words that we try to interpret. It's because we're reading it in the English. So to come to the full understanding, you got to come back to the Hebrew. And this is why we're returning to the Hebrew language to get the breakdown and the understanding of the scriptures, because the same things spoken in Hebrew, when it's translated into another language, have not the same force. So the scriptures actually lose power by reading it in English. A lot of the scriptures, when you go into the Blue Letter Bible and you look at the Hebrew word, the understanding of the scripture becomes much more clear. It brings the scripture to life. It uh, increases the effectiveness of the scripture. So again, for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another language have not the same force, meaning they don't have the same power when you read it in Hebrew. And this is also goes for the names of our Lord, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, because Jesus and Jehovah, those are English translations. They don't got the same force or the same power as Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. The names even sound more powerful. And not only these, oh, let me, for the same things other than Hebrew and translated into another tongue, another language, have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books. So, yeah, the law, the prophets, and the rest of the books. When you read it in English, it don't have the same force. That's why we're returning to the Hebrew. And have no difference when they are spoken in their own language. So the books, the prophets, the law, and the rest of the books, um, they have the power that they're meant to have when it's spoken in their own language. Because the prophets have their own language. They spoke Hebrew. They spoke and wrote in Hebrew. This truth, the Bible, was not meant to be read in English. That's why we're returning back to the Hebrew. Because you get um, the scriptures are more effective, they're more powerful when you 
you understand some of the Hebrew words. And this the entire reason, right, brothers, returning to the Hebrew, and it was prophesied that we would. And as we continue, for in the 8th and 13th year coming into Egypt, when Eurogates was, was king and continuing there for some time, I found a book of no small learning. Therefore, I thought it most necessary for me to, be, to bestow some diligence and travail to interpret it using great watchfulness and skill in that space to bring the book to an end and to set it forth before doom also which in a strange country are willing to learn now when we break this down i found a small i found a book of no small learning meaning when it comes to learning the bible this is not a small matter learning the bible is a big deal so this book that he found is of no small learning. It's gonna take a great deal of learning. So people who don't invest a great amount of time into the Bible, they just read a couple things a couple times, they think they got it, that's foolishness. Therefore, I thought it most necessary for me to bestow some diligence and travail to interpret it. So in learning the Bible, you gotta bestow diligence. You gotta be on it constantly. And you know, Practice makes perfect. Using great watchfulness and skill in that space to bring the book to an end, to bring understanding to it, and set it forth before them also, which in a strange country are willing to learn. This is us. The Lord woke up the elders of Great Millstone um, to put great diligence into interpreting the Bible to break it down so they could bring this wisdom to us in a strange country, which would be America, to those that are willing to learn. So the Lord woke up the elders of Great Millstone to bring this truth to those who are willing to learn in a strange country, which would be America. So this applied back then, but it perfectly applies now. That's why we're returning back to Hebrew. It gives you better understanding of the scriptures being prepared before in manners to live after the law, which would be the entire Bible, all wisdom coming from the Lord and is with him forever. So yeah, that's um the prologue of Sirach, the son of Yahweh Shai. So pretty much a summary, the thing spoken in Hebrew loses its power when you read it in another language. That's how we return back to the scriptures. And I'm doing a little something on my phone real quick, but I'm going to send it and we're going to look at it. So give me about 10 seconds. Well, anyways, we're going to continue. And that's why when we hit Zephaniah 3 and 9, it reads, For then I will turn the people a pure language, and they shall call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So this is prophesying that we will return back to the Hebrew language, which is that pure language. For then I will turn to the people a pure language. He will turn to us a pure language because we will be speaking another language. That's why going back to this thing, Ecclesiasticus 1 and 1, it says, For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force. The Hebrew is that pure language that the Lord will turn his people to, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So he, the Lord has to turn us back to Hebrew to call upon his name. You can't call upon the name of the Lord speaking English. So everybody that's part of the elect, you know, they might not know other Hebrew words, but they know Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. That's them already returning back to the pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord. And that what we call on upon the name of the Lord, we call upon it with one consent. The elect are going to be chanting and screaming, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. It's not going to be no mix of names within the people that's going to receive salvation. Everybody going to be calling upon him with one consent. And that would be his name in Hebrew. So, even if you don't 
no other Hebrew words. You know some Hebrew, Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. So hold on to that. And we get to our next scripture. And now we're bringing the third part through the fire. What's the third? A third is that one third hopefully legs. And we'll refine them as silver is refined. And we'll try them as gold is tried. And the Lord, oh, let's continue. They shall call upon my name and I will hear them. We're going to call upon the name of the Lord using the Hebrew, his true Hebrew name. And the Lord is going to hear that. He's not going to hear his English translations. And I will say it is my people. So the people that the Lord here calls on his name, using his Hebrew name, the Lord's going to say, now nah, that's my people. It's going to people be screaming, Jesus, God, Lord. The Lord's going to say, those not my people. They don't know me. But those screaming, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, the Lord's going to be like, I know them. That is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. Or Yahweh, Mahashim Yahweh Shai, is my God. Because remember, when we see Lord or God in all caps, that's the true name of the Lord in Hebrew. And that's why when we come here to Acts 4 and 12, it reads, neither is there salvation in any other, meaning neither is there salvation in any other name. For there is none other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved, meaning there is no other name whereby we must be saved. And we're not just talking when we be speaking Hebrew words. There's a Bible app where you can look at the words in Hebrew. So as we look here, and it should come to pass, this entire phrase is actually a word. And that reference point would be H 1961. This H is short for Hebrew. And that's why when we come down here, H 1961. These are the same Hebrew words. So right here it says in English it shall come to pass but right here in English it reads shall be. The shall be and it shall come to pass it's the same Hebrew word noted by the reference H 1961 H 1961 and that Hebrew word would be Haya. Haya. Now I got a little short clip I'm gonna play real quick from the brother Kazak. We we spoke the Paleo Hebrew uh, in the ancient world. And the Paleo Hebrew would be over here to the left. The Assyrian Hebrew we can dismiss. But the Paleo Hebrew is where Yahweh Shai and the prophet spoke. Okay. E even um the one you call Jesus Christ. He spoke Paleo Hebrew. He didn't speak Aramaic. Okay, the disciples they spoke Paleo. Okay, they they spoke uh, what's called the Lashawan Kodash, which is the holy tongue. Okay, the holy language. That's the Paleo Hebrew, man. Which the word Paleo means ancient. All right, that's what they spoke. Okay, now to explain the characters here, which is pretty. Uh, Self-explanatory. I have the pronunciation to to the right of it, to the right of the character. You have the ah, the ba, ga, da, ha, wa, za, ka, ta, ya, ka. It's a ka tu, ka, la, ma, na, sa, i, pa, ta, za, kwa, ra, sha, ta. Okay, and as you can see, it ends with the ah sound. There's no uh, ooh sound. There's no a sound like a. It, you know, uh, th those are pronunciations that Esau made up. So yeah, a lot of the stuff that we say in he in English, those are pronunciations that Esau made up. And that's East, the English language is Esau language. It's not our language. Cause you see, when you look at our alphabet, it all ends in I. And there is one I. Like you said, there is no ooh, there is no may, there is no er. Like when you say brother, master, number, weather, that's Esau's language. And to prove that that Esau's language, 
A lot of the words that we say, they say it's slang. Because a lot of the words that the so-called Negroes, when we speak English, we take the E-R and we, we replace it with an A. Like we don't say brother, we say brother. We don't say sister, we say sister. Even like when we say weather, we say the weather or the number. You know, like we don't put the emphasis on the ER. A lot of the stuff we say, an A comes out with it. And Esau say that's Ebonics or that slang or we don't know how to speak properly. No, it's our Hebrew tendencies coming out when we speak the English language. That's the spirit of the Lord in us trying to return us back to the Hebrew language. Because sister versus sister with an A or brother with an A. That's why a lot of the words, we pronounce them like that. That's the Hebrew creeping up on us, trying to come out. Now I got a little something else we're going to look at real quick. I put that link to that video in the description box. Then there's a website right here. I put this link in the description box as well. But sort of the same thing the brother had. You can see the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet. Ya, ta, ka, za, wa, ha, da. You know, then you got the I right here. And all you really have to do to speak Hebrew is string these different sounds together. And when you start reading the Hebrew, it makes more sense than the English language. And as we come down, they have some of the words here that we can look at some of the most common words like israel is yasha allah i'm not trying to find some of the words we say but let's go down and they have a lot of the most common words in english translated and um translated to the hebrew So, for example, even when we look at this word power, it's Allah, or powers for plural, Allah, hi, yum, king, malak, my lord, Adonaya, or just lord would be Adon, peace, shalom, bless you, Barak, Adah. Forgive me, Salakia, or Salak, just for forgive. Praise, Halal. That's uh, sometimes we say, call Halal. That's all praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. We see the name of the Lord right here, Yahweh. And this will be the 12 tribes of Israel. For Judah, Yahweh, Duh. Benjamin, Benayamin, Levi, Lawaya, Simeon, Shemayawan. So, this is really stringing the different sounds together. And this is why we return it to the Hebrew language. And we're not just making this up. It was prophesied that we would. That's why, again, for I would then turn the people to a Hebrew language. And again, that's why we don't say sister or brother with an emphasis on the herb. We say sister or brother. It ends with an A when we say it. That's the Lord turning us to the Hebrew, to the Hebrew language. That, that's not slang. That's not Ebonics. Those are baby steps back to the Hebrew language. Because remember, the same thing other than Hebrew loses its force when it's translated into another language. And it has not the same force in them. Not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books. And it doesn't lose its power. And in these books, when you read in the Hebrew, it retains its power, it retains its effectiveness when it's spoken in its own language. And that would be the Hebrew language. Because the Bible was written for the for the Hebrew. It wasn't wrote, written for the English. So this is just showing the importance of the Hebrew so that um, people know, don't think we just yapping.
because again, the same things other than the Hebrew loses its force when translated to another language. The Lord will turn us back to this pure language. So that's it for this lesson here. Till next time, Shalom.